we're going to go ahead and get started. Appreciate everybody who's uh, plugged in for today. So, you know, every week we do a podcast related to estate planning, asset protection planning, legacy planning, and how to make sure that you have things in place to protect your assets and your loved ones. Today, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about tax planning. And in the past, we've talked about planning around estate taxes, minimizing the, the assets that you have counted as part of your estate and strategies to do that. We've also talked a little bit about <clears throat> capital gains tax planning um, and some of the strategies to get around capital gains tax planning, specifically, you know, the, the types of strategies that you would use and if you're exiting from an asset or a business, uh, either before the sale, during the sale, or after the sale. Um, but today, we're going to talk a little bit about, <clears throat> just in a general sense, when it comes to income tax planning, uh, what some options that a tax attorney would be able to provide that maybe you haven't seen or don't see from your accountant or your CPA. So one of the things that's interesting is, you know, when you sit down with your CPA or with your accountant every year, their job is to help to minimize the tax exposure that you see uh, on, on your tax bill by looking at what you did last year and saying, okay, well, based on what you did, these are the deductions that we can try to maximize your savings so that you get more money back in your pocket or that you have to pay less to the IRS, right? Um, but what happens is that they can only work with the menu that you've given them based on what your activity over the last year was. You can't take a time machine and go back and change what was done. And so because you, you can't do that, then the CPA or the accountant is limited on what options they can even present to you. So a lot of times I hear clients that come and they say, well, my CPA doesn't, you know, doesn't uh, tell me about how I can save money or how I can, you know, reduce my taxes. They just do the tax filing and every year I end up paying more than I think I should. And the problem is that too often tax professionals don't have the opportunity to do what we call proactive tax planning, which is sitting down in between the tax season, not when you're actually doing your filing, but talking about the structure and the entities and the flow of the money to make sure that those things are positioned properly so that next year you have less tax exposure. That's the groundwork, the foundation that needs to be laid in order for them to have a different menu when they come to do your taxes the following year. So it's too many of us, and uh, and I'll say myself included at times, um, you know, we even file extensions. We want to delay it to the last possible moment, right? So rather than doing our taxes ahead of time or thinking about it ahead of time, we're always thinking about it in the rear view mirror. And the problem is that if you don't take the opportunity to sit down and proactively plan for your taxes, then every time that you look backwards, you're going to see opportunities that were missed. So proactive tax planning is all about sitting down with a professional, whether that's a tax attorney or a competent CPA that can do some of this proactive planning and strategizing on what are the structures that would make the most sense for you to take advantage of particular strategies that can reduce your tax exposure. And sometimes those strategies uh, can come in the form of uh, changing the, you know, if you're a business owner, changing the, the business structure. One of the things that, you know, we talk about a lot is if you are a W-2 employee, you're limited to maybe a couple dozen types of deductions opportunities. But if you're a business owner, if you, um, you know, have a, a company that you can run expenses through, then all of a sudden a whole world of deduction opportunities opens up to you, right? So you get hundreds of deduction opportunities where you only had a couple dozen before. Well, even as a business owner, sometimes you find yourself pigeonholed in the way that you're filing your taxes. So for example, if you're a partnership or if you have an LLC that's taxed as a partnership and you go to pay your taxes and then your CPA says, well, yeah, you're paying this self-employment tax. And you say, well, how do I, how do I avoid that? And they, they say, well, it's too late now, but we can save you 
next year, right? Because you have to change the structure of the company and how it's being taxed in order to, uh, you know, avoid those self-employment taxes. So th there are options like that that sometimes make sense. Sometimes it's a matter of the flow of the money. So we look at, okay, well, the money's coming in this way through this company, but maybe we want to do what's called income shifting so that it's not all coming from that source. Maybe we need some of it coming from a secondary company where you can claim more losses. Maybe we need some of it flowing down to your children who are minors who are going to be in a lower tax bracket. Maybe we need some of the money flowing through, uh, you know, secondary businesses that you have uh, losses that you can offset with or, or other, uh, you know, deductions that make sense for expenses that you're using for, for personal needs, but that can be justifiable as business expenses if done properly. So for example, we had a lady who, um, who has a business and, uh, <clears throat> she's like a court reporter, right? And uh, and she spends a lot of money on her son's go-kart racing, uh, you know, activities. And it's a hobby for him, but it's an expense, a big expense for her, right? And she said, you know, I wish that there was a way to deduct some of the expenses that I'm paying for all this go-kart stuff. And uh, she says, but, but my CPA says it can't be done. Well, it's not a question of whether it can be done or whether it can't be done, a lot of times when you go to your CPA or your accountant and you say, can I do this? They're going to say no, but they're going to say no because you don't have the structure in place to be able to do it properly. If you were to put the proper structure in place and make it justifiable, then the answer would change, right? So in her situation, we say, okay, well, how do we do this? And the answer was, well, one of the ways we can do it is if you were to do a marketing campaign about, you know, being the speedy court reporter and, you know, what it, something like that, but it's all based around this theme of go-kart racing, then all of a sudden, whatever you're putting your, your branding on and how you're marketing and you're putting yourself out there and you're taking, you know, um, modeling pictures of somebody on, you know, the go-kart that has your brand and everything on it. And uh, if you were to pay a stranger to do all of those things, then you could, um, you know, mark it off as an expense for the company. So if somebody in the family is doing it and maybe at a reduced cost or maybe you're doing it in-house and, and getting the equipment and everything to be able to do that marketing campaign, why is that not deductible? And the answer is it is deductible, but it has to be structured properly in order to justify it to the IRS if there was ever an audit. And so a lot of times, you get to your CPA and, and the, the question is asked, can I deduct this? That's the wrong question. Because if you ask, can I do it? The answer is always going to be dependent on what has already, what foundation has already been laid in the past. The, the, the correct question should be, how can I do this? Because if, if you ask, how can I deduct this? Then it turns into a brainstorming session of, what options are there to be able to, is it even possible? Right. And so, for example, there was another client that, you know, they had bought a, a big screen TV for their, um, for their home, uh, theater system. And they said, man, I wish this was deductible. I do bring in clients, you know, to my home office to be able to see, you know, staff and whatnot. And they go into the, if you go to your CPA and you say, Hey, I got this big screen TV for my home and I want to deduct it, they're going to say, no, not, no way, right? But if you were to say, I got a presentation screen for my home office where I can present to, uh, you know, partners and clients, um, and, and I do that regularly or, or off and on, then the presentation screen doesn't raise the same red flags. Does that make sense? So a lot of it has to do with how it's presented and what groundwork has been laid beforehand on what's justifiable or what's not justifiable. And then, you know, what happens is when you do your taxes, you start off with your gross income, which may be a large amount. And then that's going to get funneled down through all the deduction opportunities that your CPA or your accountant is taking advantage of until you show your net income, which should be a much smaller number. But sometimes that smaller number is still too big and you're still paying too much in taxes. So one of the things that we do when we do proactive tax planning is we say, well, what structures can we build in that turn into a relief valve to 
siphon out money, siphon out value that would otherwise be exposed to taxes and put it into a bucket that doesn't get exposed to taxes right now. And there are several ways to do that. So we use structures related to retirement planning to be able to do that. Sometimes people say, oh, yeah, I know all about that. I'm deducting my, you know, my 401k plan. And, you know, because I've established it, I'm contributing towards it. Plus, you know, matching, uh, I can deduct up to, you know, let's say $64,000. And that's the maximum I've heard you can do at all. So I already know all about that. Yeah, but there's other options. So there are, for example, structures like defined benefit plans that can get you up to millions of dollars sometimes even on what you can put in per year. There are other structures that you can set up that, you know, that, that don't limit you to the defined contribution plan that most people are used to. Um, so, so there may be alternatives that you haven't considered, and that's where you need a competent professional to be able to help you to put those structures in place. And what about using asset protection structures for tax planning? Well, we have options like that as well that, you know, you can expense as a business expense, but then put the assets, the value into an environment that if they're not claimed against, if there's nothing that, that actually ends up uh, creating a liability against you, then those assets are there for use for all kinds of things in the future, but you didn't have to pay taxes up front because they were deducted as an expense in the first place. So there are structures that we can do for that, like uh, private reinsurance companies and others. We can also use charitable planning structures to, to uh, minimize the tax exposure. So we can put in place private foundations or charitable trusts, and the money that flows into there doesn't get taxed because it's deducted as a charitable deduction, up to 60% of your income, depending on you know what you're contributing and, and where. So, you know, there's a lot of these structures that can be put in place on a situation by situation basis that could make sense. If you're paying too much in taxes, especially if you're a business owner and you're paying too much in taxes and you're not feeling like your tax professional is helping you enough to find those proactive tax planning opportunities, it might make sense to sit down with a tax attorney and to have us look at what you're doing, how you're doing it, and come up with, you don't need to use every strategy. Some of them, you know, the, some clients will even say, well, I like all of them. Why can't I use all of them? Well, you can, but there's costs involved too. So it doesn't make sense to do all of them necessarily. But you may only need one or two strategies that can really give you a, 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 a healthy uh, margin to be able to reduce your taxes by and make a dramatic difference, save you hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, sometimes, you know, even more per year in taxes, simply because you structure things in a different way and have the money flow differently. And that's the value of having a, a competent tax professional, like a tax attorney that works in conjunction with your tax preparer. And, uh, and that's one of the things that we can do. So um, if, if you've thought about tax planning, or maybe you haven't thought about tax planning, but you're thinking about it now, that's something that we would recommend. And uh, we'll definitely be touching on this topic again in the future. So thanks again for joining us. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe. We have uh, several recorded podcasts that, um, that have valuable information about tax planning, estate planning, legacy planning. And we'd love for you to be able to join in on those. And wherever you get your podcasts, feel free to subscribe. We'll be here each week on Thursday. And we'll see you again soon.